Hi so, there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure. Talk to us a little bit about your art and what art means to you. Um, basically, my art is abstract. I enjoy using all colors, mixing colors together to get different textures, blending of different colors. And art to me means everything. All around us in the world is art. The sky is the co different colors, the waters, the oceans, the trees, the flowers. And I get great enjoyment out of seeing every one of these visual settings as I walk every day in different places. And I try to express that in my art and people tend to see in abstract art what they want to see. They're mm -hmm. able to extract for themselves. Some of them, it's on a spiritual journey. A lot of my art is spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, for them, it's uh, like if they're reading a book and they get emotional. Some people get emotional on, in art. Mm -hmm. I've also used art in the nursing homers with the Alzheimer's patient mm -hmm. to use it as a tool to try to get them to express past memories through color. Mm -hmm. Not only do they do it through art, they do it through music, they do it through baking, they do it. So I mm. happen to have done it throughout the years with art. So, so take us through a little bit this concept of abstract art. Um, how do you approach it? You know, what take us if you will a little bit into the kitchen. Um, when you are at your canvas and you're creating your art, do you have something in mind that is that you're trying to get across, or you or or you're just inspired? How, how does it work for someone who is doing abstract art? It works in two ways for me. At times on the canvas, I'll write a uh, Hussek from Tehillim. Wow. And I'll put it on the canvas and I'll see, let's where it, take, where it takes me. So it doesn't start necessarily with the canvas. I go into the paint room and I'll, so if I'm starting a new project, I'll say, what color hits me at that moment? Wow, I could really start with the yellow. And then I let it evolve. Mm -hmm. It's almost like writing an essay. You start with your first power sentence and then you let it evolve or baking or cooking. You take ingredients and add to it. And that's mm -hmm. what paint is to me. And if I see the yellow and I'll say, gee, it's a gloomy day outside. I'll say, well, we could put a little uh, ten, you know, gloom into the picture. Maybe I'll use a little black or a little brown, but I really try to keep them vibrant. Mm -hmm. A lot of colors I use, um, a color I use often is blue. Mm -hmm. Blue is the sky, blue is uh, the waters, mm -hmm. and people tend to gravitate to blue. So are you trying to make the art, in a way, be an expression of the Tehillim and an expression of your feelings? I think what happens is um, if we use the word emuna, we see what happens. Mm. I don't want to say that the Pusik of Tehillim um, means that's what I'm going to paint. I put the Pusik in, a Pusik that might hit me at the moment, I'll open it and I'll stop painting. And I think it just evolves together. It's, it's a way of giving the painting a bracha, so to speak. You know, it's so interesting as I'm hearing you speak and I wonder if you if you over the course of your life have done this is, you know, when you speak about, when you hear this from people that are, you know, they, they call this like either in the zone or um, in flow, but there's a concept also in Torah where you, you're you not trying to get in Hashem's way. You're letting Hashem speak through you. You're letting Hashem, you know, act through you. And in many ways, I'm hearing from you that when you are approaching your art, you're not trying to overanalyze it. You're trying to be a conduit, if you will, of the divine that then ends up on the canvas, which then when someone interacts with, they're not interacting with someone who is calculating. They're acting with someone who put their soul into it. And that is probably why it hits them like that. I think it's two things. I think part of it is correct, an extension of the hands, if you want to say. Um, but also it's what God gave me in an eye to visually right. make those colors pleasing. So I do work with colors and I'll say, wow, this could use a little bit more white or maybe I could add this to what will give me the enjoyment of that painting and hopefully others. 
Mm-hmm. But the first part of it is correct. It's what we all do in everyday life. And we hope that we don't try to control the situation as that we go with the flow, that this mm-hmm. is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it's very funny. Just one second. When Perfect. you weren't coming on and I said, you know, maybe there's a problem. I just read um, in one of these um, books. I said, listen, if something happens, it happens for a reason. You just accept it. And if he's not there, so we'll do it another time and not there say, oh, here I am sitting here. So <laughs> I always had that little spiritual component. In and it's a tremendous component. I think it's it's the factor that makes it all work. Um, and it's beautiful that it's not only who you are, but it's also what you put into your to your expressions. Is there a piece that is your favorite? Like, yeah. is there anything that you can remember? Yes, I sent it to you. It's called a uh, Steel Veil. I believe that's the piece. Okay. And that was in honor of my father. My father had Alzheimer's. Mm. And there's a painting behind the steel veil. And the reason I painted it was remembering when my father came out of Alzheimer's for about six weeks, he told me he was behind a steel veil. He heard what I was saying, but couldn't respond. And my working with Alzheimer's and lecturing with Alzheimer's, I wanted that as a memory to him. But in a steel veil, it also represents everybody else that has a blockage of letting go. What Mm. would they like to express themselves and let that steel veil rise? Beautiful. How do people find your art? They find my art um, through different galleries. I've been traveling around the world. I was invited in different countries on the internet, Instagram, Facebook, and other things, which I don't go on to. I've never been on Instagram. (laughs) Facebook maybe one. <laughs> and when people say, are you on Instagram? I call Elkie who works with me. I say, on Instagram. <laughs> uh, my generation was just not made for that. And right, I, don't think right. I was either. We don't want you to change in the slightest. You <laughs> and and when they ask me for my address, I still give my home address. And they say, no, 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 I have to give the other one. It's also interesting with the abstract art, I never signed the front of the piece because I find that people turn it in different directions and they tend to see different things that might have evolved for them, which didn't evolve for me. So I usually sign the back for them. I'll sign an autograph for them. And uh, they find me, uh, we've sold around the country, which is pretty nice. Um, And uh, it's an interesting journey, a journey which was hard for me to leave the nursing homes. And, But um, it's funny, when I first started, they used to ask me what I do. And I said, I'm a nursing home administrator. I had a very hard time saying I'm an artist. Yeah. And when I went to Kennedy Airport, the guy said, how to have a nice flight, Mr. Kerman. I said, you know me? He said, I follow you on Instagram. I said, oh, you know, I wasn't used to that. What this journey has done for me at this stage in my life, it took me around the world meeting other artists, exploring a different world, but as I wrote in my paragraph to you, I try to go into a nursing home in different countries and work with the residents there. Beautiful. And we started a program in Brazil um, with Rav Gurari. Um, he's the Chabad rabbi there where we go into nursing homes. And one thing we found, which was amazing, that so many people came to us and said, you know, I grew up Jewish. I used to put on tefillin. So from that, we arranged a program for people to go in and put on tefillin with them. Beautiful. So beautiful. We had, to, we had to stop that because of the pandemic. Wow. Neil, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and uh, I wish you so much continue, continued enjoyment as you share your light with the world. The same to you, and it's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. For more content, like and subscribe, and be sure to tune in live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern at theshabbatshow.com or right here on YouTube.